All right, so um, a lot of you seem to have really liked the old SAT um, strategies video. Well, since then, the test has changed. So I'm going to do a few here um, on last minute strategies for the new SAT for the math section. So let's begin. Um, all of these questions, by the way, are taken from the um, official practice tests that the SAT released. They're readily available on their website. And I have them labeled so you can see where each question is coming from. So here's the first one. Um, it's from official practice test one, section four. So you do have a calculator on this one. Katarina is a botanist studying the production of pears by two types of pear trees. She noticed that type A trees produced 20% more pears than type B trees did. Based on Katarina's observation, if the type A trees produced 144 pairs, how many pairs did the type B trees produce? So the key to this question is recognizing that these answers are all the type B trees. And then it says that type A trees produced 20% more pairs than the type B trees did. Okay. So the common error here would be to, well, uh, take 20% of 144 and remove it from that, uh, remove that from 144. The problem with that is that's not 20% more than type B. That's actually type B producing 20% less than type A. That's not actually the same thing because we'd be taking the percentages of different numbers. What we do know, though, is that the type B trees produce one of these four values. So let's take 20% uh, of each of these and then add it to uh, the type B, because type B plus 20% of type B is type A. Okay, so uh, this is kind of a uh, back solving strategy. What we're going to do is I'm going to take 20% of each of these numbers, and let's do them one at a time. 0.20 times 115, and do remember, you do have your calculator here. That's 23. Well, if I now add this 20% of type B, uh, I'm going to get 138 for my type A. But they said that type A trees produced 144 pairs. So that's not right. So let's try 120. We'll take 20% of 120. That will be 24. And again, feel free to use your calculator here. And uh, then we're going to add up the 120 and the 24, and we get 144, which is... Uh, the number that matches our type A production. So it's actually in this particular case pointless to test the other two, but if you were to do it, 0. 0.20 times 124 is actually 24.8, and uh, 0. 0.20 times 173, that's um, 300, uh, excuse me, 34.6. And both of these cases, now the 173 answer doesn't really make a lot of sense because they said the type A trees produced more. Well, the type B trees then couldn't produce 177 because that would actually be more than 144. So in this case, uh, and in both of these cases here, we get 148.8, which is nonsense because then we end up with 0.8 of a pair. Uh, and if we add these up, we get 207.6, which isn't correct. Um, so on these back solving questions, a lot of the time you really don't need to check both answers. Um, but this is a good way to solve this question without having to set up the algebra. For those of you that are interested in the algebra, I'm just going to do it really quickly here. Um, the equation that we can convert this to is that uh, A is B times 1.2. And uh, we would divide both sides by 1.2. And then we could just put in um, the A, which is 144. We would get 120. That, that's not immediately obvious um, in terms of the algebra. And, and this prevents you know, algebraic errors. So this is a good example of back solving. So we can use the answers 
uh, to find our solutions. Next question is uh, number 19 from the same test. I actually went backwards a little bit here. It's a similar type of question. So it's going to be another back solve question. And uh, one way that we can identify back solve questions is if we have some sort of unknown in the question and all the answers are numbers, usually that will tip you off to the fact that you can back solve it. So we have a food truck that sells salads for $6.50 each and drinks for $2 each. The food truck's revenue from selling a total of 209 salads and drinks was $8.36.50. And the question is, how many salads were sold that day? So this is the number of salads. Okay. And again, we do have uh, the calculator for this test, for this section. So we can use it. So again, we can use the answers to see which one of these produces the right scenario. So each salad is... Um, six dollars and fifty cents so we can figure out how much money we make from the salads now there's another strategy here and it's become a little bit less effective since they've gone down to four answers rather than five but you could pick an answer that's in the middle and see if it works um, and if it doesn't you actually can eliminate some answers so i'm going to do that here um, i'm going to pick 93 and what we're going to do is multiply 93 by 650 uh, because that will get me the total price of 93 salads at 650 each. And if we put that in, we get uh, 604.5 um, so 604.50. Uh, okay And then we have to say, okay, well if we have 93 salads, and there was a total of 209 salads and drinks. That means that the number of drinks is uh, 209 minus 93. Okay, and that's going to be 116. So if we get 116 drinks, well, then we can multiply that by 2 to get the value of those drinks. And what we get is uh, 232. So this is the revenue from the drinks. This is the revenue from the salads. Now we can add those up. And what we do get here is 836.50. So I've actually gone ahead and, and inadvertently stumbled on the correct answer because that matches the revenue that the question gave us. So in this case, this was the correct answer. But let's say I tried 99 first. So if I multiply 99 by 650, Okay, what I'm going to get for the uh, dollar amount from the salads is uh, actually going to be $643.50. And then I'll repeat the process to figure out the number of drinks, which is going to be 110. And I'll multiply that by 2 as well um, to get the revenue from the drinks. I get 220. Now, if I add those up, I'm going to get. Uh, $863.50. Now, uh, that looks the same. It's not. Um, but the key here is that this is too much. We were told that they were brought in eight thirty six fifty. dollars So that means since a salad is more expensive, they had to have sold less salads than 99. So by just finding that C is too much, we can go ahead and eliminate answer choice D. Again, I've happened to have stumbled upon the correct answer here with B, uh, but had you chosen C first, uh, it's too much. You can go ahead and eliminate both C and D. So let's take a look at the next question. This one does not involve a calculator. This is actually a trig question. Some of you may recognize um, the uh, equation here. But if you don't, uh, I just want to go through this one because I find this question, uh, it's actually a very simple question, but I find that uh, the wording of it can be a little bit difficult. So we have a right triangle and one angle measures X. So whatever, let's put that as X. And the sine of X is four fifths. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 
So that's why I put the 4 opposite the x and the 5 uh, at the hypotenuse. Now, the question is, what is the cosine of 90 minus x? And the tricky part here is this is not a calculator question. Had we uh, had a calculator here, this question would be very, very simple. So if we had a calculator, we could find that x is the inverse sine of 4 fifths. Uh, and we'd actually get the degree measure, which would be 53.1 degrees. And then we'd say, okay, well, the 90 minus X is 36.9 degrees. And then we'd say, okay, well, let's take the cosine of 36.9. But we don't have the calculator, and I trust it that most of us don't know this, uh, these numbers offhand. We're not expected to. So... Uh, instead, what we need to do is say, well, how do I get 90 minus x out of this? And the key is in this angle here. Remember the three angles of a triangle. Let's call this angle y. The three angles of a triangle have to add up to 180, and we know that this is 90. So if I actually solve this one for y by subtracting 90 from both sides and subtracting x from both sides, what I'm going to get is y is 90 minus x. And that makes a lot of sense because uh, these two angles do have to add up to 90 degrees. So this angle right here is uh, actually 90 minus x. So if we take the cosine of that, well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is the 4 and uh, the hypotenuse is the 5. So the cosine of 90 minus x is actually also 4 over 5. So again, with the calculator, this would be a very easy question to do without really thinking about this. But I wanted to bring this one up um, because it is a question that a lot of students stumble on. And uh, if you don't remember the formula, there is an equation that the sine of x is the cosine of 90 minus x and vice versa, the cos of x is the sine of 90 minus x. Um, it's not an identity we use all that often. So I just wanted to show how to do that if you do not remember the identity. All right, number 15, we're back to some uh, innovative strategies here. And this is a non-calculator uh, section. So uh, again, we have to get uh, try to find a way to simplify this. And the question reads, the expression 5x minus 2 uh, over x plus 3 is equivalent to which of the following? So we have a bunch of expressions here. And what we want to do to make this question really, really easy is uh, pick a number for x. Now, um, can we solve this algebraically? Of course. Um, but picking a number for x allows us to say, well, if this is equivalent to one of these expressions, then it'll be equivalent for all the values of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a value for x that's not terribly difficult to work with, but at the same time isn't featured anywhere in this problem. So I don't want to pick 5, 2, 3, or 17. Those numbers will tend to, um, the numbers that show up in the answers and the numbers that show up in the question, they'll tend to lead to multiple answers matching. So instead, I'm going to pick a number like, um, let's say, 4. And I'm going to make the statement, let x equal 4. So by replacing the x with 4 in here, I'm going to get 5 times 4 minus 2 over 4 plus 3. Now, what I'm going to get now is uh, 20 uh, minus 2, which is 18 over 7. Now we can leave it like that. Uh, we don't necessarily need to get a decimal value out of that. We do know that this should be between 2 and 3 because 14 divided by 7 is 2, 21 divided by 7 is 3, so that might help us as well. So let's take a look at the first one here. Uh, the first choice here, A, doesn't even have an x. We don't actually have to do anything to this. This is just 3 over 3, which is 1. We know that 1 is not equal to 18 over 7. So we can go ahead and cross that one out. 
Then five minus two thirds, well, we have to get a common denominator here. So I'm gonna drop a one and I multiply this by three over three. So we get 15 thirds minus two thirds. And actually we can perform the subtraction. Now this is 13 over three. Now we don't necessarily know if 13 over three is equal to 18 over seven offhand, but we know that 12 over three is four. So this has to be greater than four. And we know this is between two and three. So that's no good either. Okay. Now we have some with the X in it, and we have to remember what we made our let statement. We let X equal four. So we're going to use that same four to match our answers. So we get five minus two over four plus three. So we have five minus two over seven. And again, to simplify this, I'm going to multiply this by seven over seven. What we get is 35 over seven minus two over seven we get 33 over seven. That is not the same thing as 18 over seven. So we cross that out. So by process of elimination, the answer must be the last one here, D, but we're gonna verify it. So it's five minus 17 over four plus three, which is five over one minus 17 over seven. And again, we're gonna multiply this by seven over seven to get common denominators. We get 35 over seven minus 17 over seven and we do get exactly 18 over seven. Since that matches, none of the others did, we can conclude that D must be the answer. Let's say you picked a number such that more than one answer matched. That seems like a problem, but it really isn't. You can still eliminate the ones that don't match and just pick a different number and repeat the process. So I've got one last question here. It's 25, and again, official practice test two, section four. Um, feel free to look back again um, earlier in the video if you want to see exactly where these questions are. Um, I've listed all of them. And again, these are readily available on the College Board website um, for free. So the graph of the linear function f has intercepts at a comma zero and zero comma b in the xy plane. If a plus b equals zero, so that's a, a restriction here that we have and a does not equal b, uh, which of the following is true about the slope of the graph of f? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick uh, a couple of numbers here, a and b, so that they add up to zero. So if I let a equal, let's say four, then b has to equal negative four in order for the two of them to add to zero. So the two points that I have then are four or zero from over here, and 0b, which is now going to be 0, comma, uh, negative 4. So the question is now, which of the following is true about the slope? Well, we can now get the slope. So m is equal to uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's label these x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay, so y2 would be negative 4, minus y1 is 0, x2 would be 0, minus 4. So we get negative 4 over negative 4, which is 1. You could also plot this, kind of do a quick little sketch here. If we have a 0, negative 4, and then we have 4, comma, 0, uh, it's a positive slope. In fact, the slope is positive one. So the answer has to be A. Uh, we hope you found this helpful. Um, if you did, check out our um, YouTube channel and check out some of our other videos. And again, feel free to comment, email, ask questions. Uh, you can email us with any additional questions you'd like us to uh, do a video of as well. Thank you for watching.